On January 1st, 2024, a video surfaced online. It's entitled New Portal, and it's from a mysterious channel called John Game Lover. The video is very low quality and shows some gameplay from an early version of Minecraft. Things seem pretty normal at first, but then the player stumbles across a redstone torch, and then another, and then another, and another. They follow these torches until they reach a large cluster of them, arranged in some sort of formation. At the center is a hole that goes straight down. After thinking briefly, the player jumps in. When they reach the bottom, they are suddenly teleported to the nether. Then the video ends. It's an unusual video from a strange channel. If we examine the description, we discover that the player is as confused as we are. The description says, What is this? Is this something from the new version? If so, that's very creepy. I showed this video to my friends and they all said they'd never seen anything like it. Is this some kind of Easter egg or is this just a very strange bug? It concludes with a date, November 3rd, 2010. Just a few days prior was the Halloween update, which added the Nether to Minecraft Alpha. But this is not the way that the Nether is usually accessed, this is something else. New Portal is merely the entry point into the long and winding maze that is John Game Lover. The second video on the channel takes place one day after the first, and it's called Teleporter. The video starts with a player within a house built into a cliff. They soon exit to the outside. In the distance, we see a strange vertical structure, but we're unable to get a great look at it. The player goes to a grassy area and begins to construct something. They place wood, wool, and cobblestone, finishing it off with an iron door and a lever to open it. After pausing for a beat, they enter, and suddenly the game shows that it's loading a new level. Upon completion, the player finds themselves up on a glass rooftop. They slowly work their way down using the waterfalls on the side. If we've been paying close attention, we can notice that this is the same base from the first video. The glass walls and gravel pathway are identical. But there's something else. Upon teleportation, the hotbar changes completely, adding a diamond sword. The glass base is also far more advanced than the starting base. This seems to imply that the teleporter has caused the player to switch worlds on their device. The description doesn't provide much, except for the detail that this strange mechanism was introduced to John by his friend. The third video was recorded on the same day, although the different hotbars suggest that some time has passed. John exits the glass base and turns to the right, passing his sugarcane and wheat farms. Approaching an empty area, he builds another teleporter. He flips the switch and then enters. But instead of taking John to one of his other worlds, it takes him into a stone room, clearing his inventory in the process. There's no exit from this room. John saves and quits, and then rejoins in the following video. He selects World 1, but he remains within the room. He reloads and joins World 2, but still, he's stuck in this stone room. Same for Worlds 3, 4, and 5. No matter what, this is where he ends up. One thing that's interesting is that, despite selecting different worlds, the player always spawns in the same location where they saved. This means that all five worlds are apparently linking to the same place. The description shows that John is getting pretty stressed out about the situation. What? Where am I? How do I get out of here? I don't want to lose all my progress. And why did I just make this mechanism? If anyone has faced something similar, please help with this problem. The following day, John joins the world to find that something has changed. Within his inventory are the exact materials necessary to construct a teleporter. John does so, and he's teleported back to the overworld. He returns to his base, grabs a pickaxe, and destroys the teleporter, block by block. One small detail that's interesting is that when John loads the game, he's in a different location in the stone room than he was when the game was saved in the previous video. Did someone somehow use his account, adding the items to his inventory? The next few videos uploaded to the John Game Lover channel are different. One is dated August 14th, 2010, and the other is August 15th. 
This means that they were recorded over two months earlier than all the videos we've seen thus far. The first is entitled Very Beautiful Generation of Mountains in Minecraft.avi. Watching the video, we don't really see anything strange. The player walks down a wooden bridge and finds some cool floating mountains, using a waterfall to climb up. The second video, entitled Diamonds.avi, is similar. It's simply gameplay footage of a player mining underground and discovering, of course, diamonds. Compared to what we've seen on this channel so far, these videos appear oddly normal. But there is one thing that's a bit off, the description of the mountains video. Wow, this generation is really beautiful. What is the chance that something like this will be created in your world? I'm very glad I was lucky with such a generation. Although this generation will not affect any of those extremely dark experiences that my friend had to experience, I am nevertheless happy. What are these extremely dark experiences? Are these videos even made by the same person? There are notable differences in the style and format of the description. Instead of using slashes, the dates use periods. They also use an emoticon, something that is not seen in the November John Game Lover videos. Despite this, the meaning of these videos, or why they were uploaded to the channel, is not clear. The next video is called Problems With My Game. We're back to November 2010, one day after John exited the underground room. The video starts within the glass base. There's a torch floating on the ground. The player walks over and replaces it on the wall. As they exit the building, they attempt to change their render distance, but it's stuck on tiny. This is apparently the titular problem with the game. The following day marks a video entitled Experiment 1. John has decided to conduct a number of experiments with the teleporter structure. They take resources from their chest and use them to craft the blocks necessary to construct a teleporter. The player exits their base and heads to the left. Walking past a cactus farm, we discover that John has constructed another portal. He enters this portal. Within the nether, he begins to clear out a space near the portal. About a minute and 40 seconds into the video, something rather strange occurs. The player is mining using a stone pickaxe, but it suddenly breaks. John constructs a crafting table and replaces the pickaxe. But if we look more closely, the initial pick should not have broken. There was still a decent amount of durability remaining. This is an anomaly that we can't explain. Eventually, John finishes clearing out the room and constructs the teleporter. They place the iron door. After contemplating for a moment, John flips the switch and enters. The player spawns in a long cobblestone hallway. Torches adorn the walls. They start to walk forward, but change their mind and quit the game. Apparently, they're trying to see if they'll be stuck here. As the player goes to the world section, we notice that world 4 has a size of 0 megabytes, something that shouldn't be possible. When the game loads in, the player is back in the nether, not in the cobblestone hallway as we'd expect. The sequence is so interesting because it forces us to think about how these teleporters work. Let's take a step back and attempt to understand what's going on here. All teleporters appear to transfer the player to another world or dimension. The level loading screen is seen each time, but the details of this appear to differ slightly. In the teleporter video, the first time that a teleporter is used, the player is teleported from whatever world they are in to the World 4 overworld on the roof of the glass base. The user's hotbar items are changed. In no known world, they begin in World 4 and the teleporter takes them to the stone room, clearing their inventory. They're stuck here until they mysteriously gain the resources required to build another teleporter. This one takes them back to World 4, spawning them at the same teleporter they used to leave. Then, in Experiment 1, the player builds a teleporter in the World 4 Nether. This time, they're teleported to a cobblestone hallway, keeping their inventory. When they save and reload the game, they're no longer in this hallway, instead being returned to the Nether. Looking at the aggregate evidence, it's difficult to find a pattern. The nature of how the teleporter works appears to be slightly different depending on the particular world. However, it will prove worthwhile to keep these apparent inconsistencies in mind as we continue we clearly don't quite understand the nature of this device. But something new is about to happen that will cause John to take a break from the teleporter experimentation. The following video is entitled, I'm Not Alone. Let's take a look at the description. What the hell is going on here? I have never built this house. Okay, in short, while I was looking for a new cave to explore, I noticed a strange structure that I did not build. After discovering it, I quickly returned home and started recording in order to somehow document what happened. In the video, I entered for the first time home when I saw the sign with the inscription, Leave. I was very scared. Now I can say with confidence I'm not alone in this world. This is an odd development, but it's actually not the first time that there's evidence of another being at work within John's world. Think back to the redstone torches in the very first video. 
the items added to his inventory when he was stuck in the stone room, even the torch on the ground and problems with my game. Throughout these videos, there's been a feeling of being watched, that the player is not the only one here. But now there's direct evidence for this, in the form of a house that has been built without John's knowledge. The next day, John attempts to hide by deleting World 2 and creating a new game. They join and head over to a tree, breaking it and using it to construct a crafting table and some tools. But as he turns around, he sees something in the distance. Signs. They read. Are you really trying to get rid of everything by creating another world? You know too much to just walk away. Unfortunately, we can't tell if these signs existed as soon as the world was created. John is not looking in that direction when he spawns. He explains his thoughts in the description. And this is exactly what I was counting on when I tried to get away from this simply by creating a new world. This is so stupid. I tried to find out from a friend if this is related to portals, or maybe this is the Halloween update? But my friend had not been in touch for quite some time. He showed up at school but did not want to talk to me at all, and simply ignored me. He talked to others as usual, which is quite strange. I asked other friends, but nothing like this happened to them. It seems as though these oddities are mine only, which makes me think they're connected to the portals. Even so, I have many questions. What is this room in the Experiment 1 video? What's behind those doors? Whose home have I found just by exploring my world? Why was there a sign on this house that said leave? And most importantly, what do I know that others don't? These comments make us wonder who exactly this friend is. Remember, John said that the first teleporter was a design from his friend. In the previous video, he questions if the house that appears has to do with the portals his friend created. And now they don't want to talk to John in real life? And then there's that line from the mountains video, the odd mention of dark experiences that a friend had to experience. Is this related? What exactly is this talking about? The following video is called First Contact. Later, we will see that this takes place on World 3. It starts with a player outside an incomplete cobblestone house. It appears that they are early on in the world, only having stone tools. John places a dirt wall and adds a sign, writing, Hello. They walk away and wait for something to happen. But the sign still says, Hello. John turns around again and goes further away this time. Once again, no change. The sign remains as hello. John saves and quits the game and reloads World 3. But this time, the sign has been replaced. It says, No exit. John breaks the sign and the video ends. The next day, John records another video. It begins in the main menu where we can see that he has deleted both World 1 and World 2. He selects the first slot and a new world loads. John spawns on a beach and heads over to a tree. He punches it, breaking a couple of logs. But then he pauses for some reason. Turning around, there's something in the distance. John walks over to discover a teleporter on the beach. The door is open. Someone has been here. John exits the game and deletes the world. The past few videos, it's become increasingly clear that someone else is here. But I want to draw your attention to another subtle anomaly that could be easy to miss. When John breaks the log, the item drops, but as he picks it up, it does not go into his hotbar as it should. It's almost as if something else has picked it up for him. John does not record a video on November 12th, but there is one for November 13th. It's entitled Dialogue. John is back on World 4 in his glass base. He constructs a cobblestone wall in the middle and adds a sign. Can you hear me? Then he exits the game. On the menu, we see that World 4 now has a size of 0.01 megabytes, compared to 0.0, .0 from the previous video. John selects it, and we see that the sign has changed with the response. Yes. John breaks the sign and adds a new one. What is your name? He exits the world again, and we see that the size of World 4 has changed, now back down to 0.0, .0 megabytes. He joins, and the sign is replaced with a series of letters and numbers. Confused, John replaces the sign. Where are you? Another save and reload. I am in a rift between the administrative space and- John responds. You need help? He saves and exits and loads World 4 once again. But this time, there's no response. The sign lies broken on the ground. Suddenly, in the background, we hear a door open, and the video ends. 
This is strange indeed. John has managed to have a conversation with the entity that is affecting his world. It says that it's trapped between the administrative space and, well, something. We don't really know what the dashes stand for. But the most disconcerting part of this whole sequence is the end. When John asks if the entity needs help, it's unable to reply, concluding with someone or something opening a door in John's world. When John asks for the name, it responds with a sequence of letters and numbers. It turns out that this is in Base64, which is a binary to text encoding scheme. In other words, this sequence can be converted into text using a decoder. When we do so, we discover that the entity is named Illusion. The following video was created on the same day, and it is called Attempt at Research. This is the most popular video on the John Game Lover channel by far, with over 100,000 views at the time of this recording. And it's popular for a good reason. The mysteries of this series are about to deepen even further. The video begins on the rooftop of the glass base of World 4. John descends the stairs and exits his base. As he approaches his cactus farm, we notice that there are a multitude of raw pork chops on the ground. John enters the nether portal. The teleporter that he built is still there. He flips the switch and suddenly the shot changes to a player walking in the stone room. The game is paused and the video switches back to John's perspective. He activates the switch again and enters the teleporter. John's teleported to the cobblestone hallway, but this time he decides to explore. As he moves forward, we see that there are doors with signs on them. John turns to the right to see another base 64 sign. This one is decoded as Ingandets, which is Danish for ingredient. John enters the room to discover a chest. It contains redstone and iron ore placed in a diamond pattern. The player exits this room and approaches the one across the hall. This also has a base 64 sign decoded as experiment. Looking through the door, we see that there's another hallway, but John doesn't enter this one. He turns to the right and continues down the main hallway. He passes two more doors with unreadable signs. The third door on the left has a visible sign, but this is not Base 64. In fact, this sign has yet to be decoded. On the other side, the sign says Room 617. John opens it and we see something familiar. This is the stone room from earlier. He approaches it and There is a lot to unpack here. First, the very beginning of the video. We don't know what happened with the door opening in the previous video, but we do know that this video was recorded on the same day. John is on the roof and his inventory is different, implying that some time has passed. It's also worth mentioning that this is where John ended up when he used the teleporter in the second video. Things get weird when John approaches the teleporter and flips the switch, closing the door. The video suddenly cuts to a shot of room 617, and it turns out that this is from the exact moment where the video freezes. By using the power of video editing, we can rearrange the clips to show how this works. John approaches the room, opens the door, enters, and saves and exits the game. So why is this clip shown out of order? And why does the video freeze and the blue screen occur when John actually enters the room? The discontinuity here is extremely bizarre. Let's talk about the stone room, which we learn is called room 617. If we look back at our teleporter diagram, we will notice that the teleporter from the World 4 Overworld went to room 617. And now, the teleporter from the World 4 Nether goes to a strange cobblestone hallway that also contains room 617. It's not completely clear if this is the same room. After all, the cobblestone hallway version has an exit. But there's clearly something special about this place. This is where the video freezes and has the time skip. In the next video, John is back in his World 4 base. He exits through the double doors and heads back to the nether. He lights up the area around his teleporter, closes and opens the door, and enters. Once again, John spawns within the cobblestone hallway. He sneaks forwards, this time approaching the fourth door on the right. It contains another sign. Splitting it up properly shows that it reads, Administrative Space. Behind the door is a teleporter. As John looks through, we hear a door open in the background. He quickly enters the room and uses the teleporter. But this time, he's somewhere new, on a cobblestone bridge so high up that the ground is invisible. John's inventory has been cleared. Confused, he walks forward along the bridge. After about 40 seconds, a structure begins to reveal itself in the fog. John approaches and sees two signs. Welcome to Storage Place, third out of five sectors of administrative space. It's another hallway with doors on both sides. 
John enters the first door, entitled Sector 1. This contains even more doors. While it's tough to make out, the signs appear to have RD and then a number. At the end is a closed door. Sector 1.5, unstable versions. Returning to the main hallway, John enters Sector 2. These doors contain numbers as well. 0.0.0a, 0.0.2a, 0.0.7a. And suddenly we have a revelation. Each of these doors corresponds to a version of Minecraft. The doors in Sector 1 have the RD prefix. This stands for Ruby Dung, which is an old game by Notch, the original creator of Minecraft. Some of the assets from this game made it into Minecraft. In fact, the very earliest versions of the game still had the RD label. In Sector 2, the doors represent early classic Minecraft builds. The format was 0.0.number A. The pattern continues as John enters Sector 9. Now these doors represent alpha versions, starting with V1.0.0. John approaches the door for alpha version 1.2.002, the version that they are playing right now. But they don't enter the door. At the end of the hallway is a sign that says Alpha V1.2.6 work in progress. This video was created November 14th, 2010. At this point in time, the most recently released Minecraft version was 1.2.2. This would mean that 1.2.6 was at least a few versions away. It wouldn't be released until December 3rd. In the next video, John remains within the administrative space. He once again enters Sector 9. This time, he locates a door with Alpha V1.0.1702. This version was released on August 20th, 2010, several months before this video was recorded. John enters to find a switch. He pulls it, and the world loads a level. There's no more sound, but if we look at the top right, we'll see that apparently the game version has been changed. It's very dark, but John sees some light and approaches a base out in the distance. It appears very normal, with a crafting table, furnaces, a chest, and a mine. He leaves and starts climbing the stairs on the outside. Occasionally, John stops and looks out in the distance, but there's nothing there. Eventually, he reaches the top, and the video ends. As of the recording of this video, Administrative Space Part 2 is the final piece of footage on the John Game Lover channel. It's unclear if this is the end, or if there's more to come. But what I do know is that the videos found here are fascinating. Let's take a step back and try to understand what's going on. According to the channel description, this channel was created to upload old Minecraft videos, presumably found somewhere on John's hard drive. Each of the videos has an original description as well as a date. These videos follow John's discovery of various anomalies on his Minecraft worlds. Many of these have to do with teleportation. We see this in the very first video, where John stumbles across a strange hole in the world that ends up transporting him to the nether. But the bulk of this occurs through the use of teleporters, a constructed structure in the world. It's first seen in the aptly named teleporter video, where John mentions that it was made by his friend. It's not exactly clear what this means. Did John's friend tell him how to make it? Were they at John's house playing his game? All we know is that John did not come up with the design himself. The teleporters, well, teleport. Each teleporter provides a link from one specific location to another specific location, much in the same way as a nether portal. But that's where the similarities end. In some cases, there can be a two-way connection, when John constructed the teleporter in room 617, it returned him to the World 4 Overworld teleporter. In other cases, teleporters go to entirely new places. Sometimes inventory items are saved, other times they are not. Throughout these videos, there's a growing sense that someone else is active in John's worlds. We see things that are slightly out of place, floating pork chops, a broken torch. At least twice, we hear a door open in the background, although we never see the other player. Eventually, the signs become even more direct, literally, as there are signs in the game with text. John discovers that he is able to communicate with this entity. Their name is Illusion. In the dialogue video, we learn that Illusion is in a rift between the administrative space and, well, somewhere. Later on, John discovers this administrative space, or at least its third sector, which is for storage. Here, he finds doors corresponding to every Minecraft version. When he enters one, he's transported to a new world, with his game version apparently changing. There's also something strange with saving and reloading worlds. Illusion uses this to build signs, sometimes even when a new world is being generated. And then there's the mystery of room 617. Why does this keep showing up? Why did all of John's worlds link to it at one point? Who gave him the tools to escape? Unfortunately, at this point, we're left with more questions than answers. The mystery of John Game Lover is far from solved. 
so please let me know in the comments what you think. I've linked the channel in the description of this video. You can also discuss this on the official RGN Discord server. John Game Lover is super weird, and I'm really excited to see where it goes. If you feel the same way, be sure to like this video and subscribe. Maybe I'll make an update video, we'll see. Also, I've been getting a lot of questions about how you can support me as a creator. I've decided to start RGN channel memberships. There's only one tier, the Deep Diver. It'll give you behind the scenes updates, a special Discord role, and I'll include your name at the end of future videos as a supporter. It's pretty low key, but if you want a way to support me directly, I'd love for you to join. This has been RGN. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day.